For the last few weeks at Cherokee Hills, we've been talking about new beginnings, brand new year, things that need to start in new directions. And for the next few weeks, I want to use these videos really kind of as a precursor or a, a, a preview of what we'll talk about the following Sunday. This coming Sunday, we're going to be talking about what the Bible says about faith and the way that that concept actually has been misused in a lot of ways. But the misuse is something that goes back really to a cultural kind of setting. For example, in Webster's Dictionary, faith is defined with these, these meanings. Allegiance to duty or to a person. The quality of keeping one's promises. Belief and trust in and loyalty to God. Belief in the traditional doctrines of a religion. Firm belief in something for which there is no proof. Complete confidence. Something that is believed, especially with strong convictions. Also a system of religious beliefs. Now with that definition or those definitions, there's a, a need to actually talk about the word belief itself. So if that is how faith is defined in Webster, according to our culture, how is belief defined? Belief, mental acceptance of something as real or true. The thing that is believed, conviction, opinion. Synonyms, and this is what it says about synonyms. Belief, faith, credence mean the assent to the truth of something offered for acceptance. Belief may or may not imply certitude in the believer. My belief, for example, that I had caught all of the errors. Faith almost always implies trust and confidence even when there is no evidence or proof. They had great faith in their coach's strategy. Credence implies intellectual acceptance, but offers nothing about the soundness of or of grounds for acceptance. That is a theory now given credence by scientists. Now those are atheists and agnostics would take great exception to this last one. Credence implies intellectual acceptance, but offers nothing about the soundness or the grounds for acceptance. But just as that it would be deemed to be inappropriate, so is the second one. Faith almost always implies trust and confidence even when there is no evidence or proof. Where does that come from? It doesn't come from a biblical definition of faith. In fact, the definition of faith you find in Scripture is something that suggests actually just the opposite. Hebrews chapter 11, the faith chapter of the Bible, deals with faith not really as a definition but as the attributes of it. However, it begins this way in chapter, in chapter 11, verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Evidence, not guesswork. Things that are hoped for, well, there's nothing wrong with that particular concept. In fact, it flies in the face of what people typically think. The idea of blind faith is not something that you find in Scripture, irregardless of what people who have a cursory knowledge of Scripture may want you to believe. But I really want to talk about faith from the standpoint of the necessity of action that goes along with it. In the religious world, people talk about we're, we're saved by faith. And the idea behind that is we're saved without any kind of, of action on our part whatsoever. In fact, I used to carry around a little tract from a particular denomination. And it great, went to great lengths in the body of this little tract, this pamphlet, to say that you're saved by faith and you, there's nothing you can do. And then the very last, page, very last page, it said, now what you need to do, and I'm thinking, no, wait a minute, there's a contradiction. You're going at lengths to tell me that I'm saved by faith without doing anything. And then the last page, you tell me that there's something I need to do? Don't you see the conflict? Faith, biblical faith, necessitates action. You can't really have faith without it. And there's something's really understood. If I really believe that, according to weather reports, there's a hurricane that's coming in my direction if I live on the coast, or if here in Oklahoma I watch the weather and I believe that there is a funnel cloud that's really headed in my direction, well, I just sit there and watch TV and not look out the window. And after all, there's something that comes on in a few minutes that's a show that I really want to watch. But I really believe that there's a tornado that's going to hit my neighborhood. No, I don't. The statements that you find about faith in Hebrews chapter 11 always have an action with them. For example, verse 4. 
By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Verse number five. By faith, Enoch was taken away so he did not see death. Why? Because he pleased God. Verse seven. By faith, Noah prepared an ark for the saving of his household. By faith, verse eight, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance, and he went out not really knowing where he was going. By faith, by faith, by faith, action, 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 action. So when you find somebody that says, okay, we're saved by faith without any kind of works, meaning there's no kind of action on our part, that flies in the face of everything you find concerning belief in Scripture, which means I really need to take a look at what it means, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, not of works, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. What does that really mean? Does Paul contradict himself when he writes to the Christians in Ephesus, when he writes to the Christians in Rome? Does James contradict Paul when he makes a statement in James chapter 2 that faith without works is dead? The answer is no. Jesus, in talking about belief that needed to be present, demanded a change in attitude and a change in life that showed that kind of belief, that kind of faith. Faith is not something that's inactive. Belief is not something that's passive. It carries with it a conviction that is based upon criteria. It's not just a leap in the dark. There's no such thing as blind faith from a biblical point of view. I hope you'll be with us this coming Sunday morning as we go back to basics and talk about what does faith really involve. If you're in the Oklahoma City area, hope to see you here. Please stay safe. We'll talk again soon.